Right, so now we've got Rose using the encyclopedia on trading range days. Are you ready, Rose? Yes. Hello, everyone. Loud this is Rose. Clear. Okay, so um, hi, everyone. This is Rose. Um, so I'm going to go through the trading range days, which is actually, I think, everybody thinks that it is the most difficult uh, part of trading, all the trading ranges or the trading range days. I found them um, very lucrative days. Um, I actually enjoy trading the trading range days, but it wasn't always like that before. Um, I used to get very confused. I didn't know what to do, uh, but when I spent some time and really learn how they behave, what are the rules that I can apply um, so that I can actually trade either side of the trading range. So I'm going to go through and make this presentation a little bit more edu uh, educational rather than browsing through the um, encyclopedia uh, file. So bear with me. Um, this is the first time I'm doing this here. Uh, so hopefully all is going to go well. All right. Um, all right, so what are trading uh, ranges? I want to start with that first before I go into the trading range days. So um, the definition is um, uh, very simple. It's ba basically, it's a balanced market. Um, goal of every market is to find an area of agreement uh, between buyers and sellers. Um, so market is always in search of some kind of fair price. So every time um, you know, price goes up and then comes down. You know, people wonder. You know, are we in a choppy environment? Um, the word choppy, I don't really use at all. I stopped using it a long time ago because there is a reason why it, um, price goes sideways, and um, and why it's in a confined area. It's because buyers and the uh, sellers are agreed on this price. So this area, um, majority of the time, acts as a magnet, and the price tends to return back to it before breaking out. So the hallmark of the trading ranges, um, we all know, it's the anthem um, that we all, um, you know, sing. It's confusion um, and disappointment. So it's big up, big down, confusion and sideways before the break breakout comes along. So trading range is basically a pullback that has grown to so many bars that um, it's not clear if trend will resume or reverse. So if the pullback Say the uh, pullback is only 20 bars and then suddenly you're getting 30 bars and the 50 bars and it's going sideways and you're wondering it's ever going to break out. Say you are in a some kind of a bull trend and we're going sideways. After 20 plus bars, especially after 30 plus bars, probably probability actually uh, shift. So is if something that looks great it's not all that great. So if something that looks like it's going to break out to the upside, it actually may not break out to the upside. Um, so the upside, the downside breakout as good as as 50% now as the ups, upside breakout. So uh, pro probability basically becomes 50-50 rather than um, 60 or 40-60. Okay, so I'm sorry that my um, slides are not as good. So I try to cram in all the um, best information. <laughs> Everything's a great um, in the course and the encyclopedia. If you take the um, Brooks uh, uh, price action course, uh, we have um, actually six, let me see, six, 10, uh, about 12, um, just about 12 videos that I'm going to go through, which um, those are um, that you can actually um, take and you can learn all about the trading ranges. So the um, majority of the information that I grab from there uh, so I'm going to go through that. Um, trading ranges always have bull and bear trends and reasonable buy and sell setups. Um, can you guys see my mouse? Can you see the point focus, Richard? Can you verify that? Because I want to point out things and I just want to make sure. No, there's nothing working on the mouse, unfortunately. So I'm pointing yeah. the um, chart right now on the right-hand side. Can you actually see it? No, no, there's nothing there. Hmm. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go through then um, in a different way because I really wanted to point out things on the chart. But if you okay, so let's let's talk about the uh, you know rule. The market markets um, generally have uh, inertia, so they always uh, want to go in the same direction, right? Until uh, you know, they can't. So they resist the change and tend to continue what they have been doing for a long time. Uh, so 
the rule for um, the rule that we have or L Brooks ha um, has and we all use is um, in a trading range, 80% of the breakout attempts will fail and the trading range continues. So what you need to do when, when you're in a trading range environment, you have to buy low, sell high and scalp and not swing. Uh, because I'm going to talk about, you know, SMP, for example, in within SMP, uh, price moves in 10 points, right? So uh, generally it scalps five points and if it's going to go into the swing, it goes 10 points. Sometimes you get these trading ranges, just about nine or 10 points. It goes about and then it reverses and comes back down to the other side. So when I have, take a look on the right hand side, when I have a trading um, an environment like this, I immediately um, just mark the top and I mark the bottom of it. So I use the bottom of it as my support and that's where I try to go in. And if I'm at the top of the trading range, look at the right side, the top image. Okay, so this is where I like to sell. So what I do is, uh, is you know, I marked every single top, okay, and I draw a line. And generally, if I'm in a trading range, that means market made three legs. So I count the legs. So you can see on the right hand side, we have about three legs here. We are clearly in a trading range until we break out. And before these breakouts, um, before um, these breakouts, um, you know, if I don't have two legs or three legs, um, I try not to do, I try not to, you know, sell at the low. I try not to expect a breakout from the high. I make sure there are three legs and then I look for some kind of a breakout. So the most moves uh, will reverse uh, back to entry um, and the stock traders can actually break in. What does this mean? So this means if you sell it, if you end up selling from a, the bottom of the trading range, untimely okay you can scale in a little bit let's say it's the scalp size or the measured move size if there's any measured move uh, you can apply you do not sell blindly you wait for price to get there and then you can scale in and most likely the price is going to go back to your original entry price it, it will also give you a break even okay uh, so you can um, and you could do the same thing from the top. So when you're actually buying and selling, it's better to have um, um, white stops. Um, so say, uh, let's talk about one, two, three, look at the top image and on the top, look at the third top, okay, from the left. So say you're selling underneath that bear bar, where would you put your stop? Your stop has to be all the way up um, before um, you start selling. Now, if you put your stop right above, price can actually still go there and break out a little bit before coming back down. It's always better to have a white stop, okay? And what you do is you sell, you grab a scalping, maybe one point, two point, and then you leave a runner and see if the market can give you two, three legs all the way back down to the trading range. And then that's where you actually collect and then see if you can actually reverse it back up. So uh, you can fade, that means you're fading the tops and fading the bottoms. You can use the bottom half of the trading range as your long entry and top half to take profit. I generally divide these uh, trading ranges either into two um, sections or three sections and I use the top section to sell, bottom section to buy. I do nothing in the middle. In the middle, I generally scalp and leave a runner for price to go higher if I bought at the low. Always look for bad signal signal bars at the high and the low. Um, so I look for inside bars. I look for, uh, you know, uh, say there is a doji of a bull bar. You know, I'm not going to buy that. I might actually sell um, at the bottom. Uh, if I'm looking for, uh, say, take a look at the bottom. Uh, I'm sorry, take a look at the top image again. So uh, there is a gap bear bar. You see that um, that get, get, get bear bar actually getting a continuation. And then you get that inside bull bar. That is right there signaling me that market could make a double bottom and I can actually put a buy stop order either above it or I can buy with a limit order and I can go for a one to one and two to one and I expect for gaps to close. Okay, so I do not sell 
bear flags, you're going to get those bad signals and people see a bear flag formation, immediately they sell, but that is the worst thing you can do. I do not buy bull flags at the top. I always expect for uh, market to reverse back. Okay, so uh, do not buy and sell the bull flags at the edges of the trading ranges. Um, use the prior um, uh, and new lows um, or prior highs to enter with limit orders. Uh, stop orders in trading ranges, you can not just enter with the limit orders, you can also enter with the stop orders, you can enter with market as long as you have a good good signal bar and a good trigger bar. Okay, so if I'm entering from the edge, generally I use the limit orders. Okay, so I'm if I'm scaling in or is I'm at the low, um, prior low, I will put a buy order at the low and I will enter. And if I see a strong bull bar, I might buy the close of that bull bar or one tick above. As it goes, I expect for two legs minimum. All right, so, um, so let's see the next slide. Trading range days, uh, rules, sorry, I'm being attacked by this little fly here. Um, after a few trend days, market um, start to pull back. So generally I look at the daily bars. In the daily, bar, you know, daily chart, if I see trend bars, um, I know that the bulls and the bears say it's a bull trend bar on a daily chart. Um, I know those bulls are going to take profit somehow. And when th that, say we're at some kind of a resistance, some trend line or a measured move is, you know that bulls are gonna take profit. And the next day could be an inside day, it could be a doji and generally price, that's when we get a trading range date. Or I have a slide for this. Sometimes you get the, um, you see these um, dojis on daily daily charts, right? So um, a daily bar is a doji bar. That actually translates um, on the five minute as a full um, trading range date. In fact, it, that day at the, say the open, um, uh, you know, uh, prior day could be also a trading range date and the next day could be the trading range date. And price can actually have um, a trend and then come back right to the open and close near the open and have another doji. So I'm go through a um, example for that, but uh, only five to 10% uh, of the bars uh, always in a breakout and the 90% of the bars in um, channels, um, they actually um, are in channels and evolve into trading ranges. So um, in trading range after a big up, big down, you will end up getting a weak signal and a weak setup bar. Most of the time we talked about it. Bad follow through after a strong trend bar uh, or breakout. Uh, so these are actually um, signs that you have to look at. You end up getting a strong, look at this, uh, look at the um, uh, chart on the top. Um, look at the first two bear legs, right? It's, it's nice, but in the middle, uh, you're getting overlapping bars. In fact, you got a big bear bar overlapping with a um, bull doji and then it's getting a continuation, but immediately it's reversing back. So you can see the big down, even it's a two legs, and then uh, you're getting this huge bull bar. It's actually encapsulated more than five, five bars, four bars over there. So it's basically telling you this is going to go sideways um, and it might still come down because the first six bars or five bars kind of setting the tone. This could actually uh, start to trend down so you could get a trending trading range, but most likely to go sideways because uh, you notice you get these really nice climactic bars or um, going down and suddenly you're getting these lower wicks that are large and then you're getting inside bars. Even the inside bars are bull bars, but if you get an upper wick and a lower wick, it's kind of signaling you that this isn't going to break out or even if it goes a little bit, it's just going to reverse back to the mean. It's going to reverse back to the center of the trading range. Okay, so uh, bad follow through after climax bars or exhaustion gaps um, rather than measuring gap bars and opposite side will try to close the gaps. Okay, so what does that mean? If you take a look at that uh, large second leg coming down, right? So you can you have one, two, three, four sell red boxes, right? It's telling you you can sell underneath the bars with stop orders. That's fine. You can sell them, but when you're getting these lower wicks, okay, when you're getting these overlapping bars and then suddenly big bull bars, that means if there's any gap there, a bear gap bar I'm talking about, those are going to be closed. 
and and actually we had an example yesterday in the trade room and uh, was it yesterday i think it was yesterday yes and uh and we talked about those gaps and people were uh, saying, oh, this is going to keep selling. No, it's going to reverse because it's a trading range day. And you can see that um, the continuation is confusing. It's not getting the trend bars um, that a regular trend would have. And when we reverse, and I actually literally marked the chart and I said, we're going back right up to that bull bar and we're going to close those gaps. And that's exactly what a trading, uh, trading range does. So always mark those gaps and expect bulls to actually close those gaps, okay? So if I'm entering from the bottom or the top, I always wait for second entries, all right? So, so take a look at the bottom uh, chart, right? So you have these uh, tight trading range open, just about six, seven bars, and then the bulls show up. You got a bull bar and a breakout bar, a really bad follow through. And you have a micro, a kind of a micro wedge, but well, it is a wedge. And then you get these inside bars. Those are bad signals, right? And then you get the bear bar with a gap and another one. So you can see first sell, you do not sell that. You wait for a second sell. You can, you can either sell underneath those dojis or you can wait for confirmation of a strong bear close bar and then you can sell that. Then you have to look for a one-to-one -one or two-to-one -to -one target uh, with a white stop. Once you get your one-to-one, -one, I generally move that stop closer to the break even or I look for a, um, because it's above the major higher high, I would move down to a um, uh, lower high. Okay, so I don't like to use the minor lower highs because generally market comes in and um, takes out those. So let's go through the next one. And probabilities, 80% um, chance breakout will fail uh, in any trading range or trading range days. In trading ranges, probability gravitates to 50-50 rather than 40-60, which we talked about. Something that should have 40% probability ends up becoming 50, something that looks bad is not all that bad. Something that looks good is not all that good. Okay, so anything that 60% uh, ends up being a 50%. 75% of the time, trend starts with breakout, moves into a channel that turns into a, a trading range. That's market cycle. Always remember market cycle. Okay, so take a look at this image right here. The chart, you have several bars, small pullback bull trend going up, consecutive bull bars. And then we're going a smaller, okay, sideways, and then it's a big gap. I'm sorry, big pullback. Sometimes in the trading range days, uh, even though you have a bull trend, you can get a deep pullback. That puts you into a trading range, okay? So if you buy, is, you know, market is going to try to close those gaps, but chances are you're also going to get a second leg, just like here and on the image. So uh, here, uh, probability continues here. 80% of the time, trend uh, reversal will fail. 80% of the time, if market is in a trading range, breakout attempt will fail. Bull channel um, is a bear flag with 75% chance of a bear breakout. You might get a trading range, trending trading range, just like on the chart here, um, pointing upwards. That means you're in a bull channel. But chances are, if you actually zoom out of the chart a little bit, you're going to notice that it's probably a bear flag. And you can also look at the uh, one hour chart. If the one hour chart is showing you a bear, uh, big bear body and then follow with a small, maybe an inside bull body, that means it's actually a, a channel. OK, so it's channeling up only to sell and then you get another bear bar um, and, but on the trading ranges we'll come down and test the low and we stop there or we get a breakout at the end of the day only 25 percent of the time you get a bull breakout bull channel and another bull breakout okay so um so uh bear channel the same thing um the 75 percent chance of a bull breakout you get if you have a bear channel um so expect to reverse Okay, so not continue down, and at 25% of the time, you get a bear breakout. So always 75%, you're going to get a reversal. I am running late. I am so sorry. I have more slides. So um, until you guys cut my mic, I'm going to go through this. <laughs> okay, but feel free to cut my mic. Okay, early trend becomes a trading range. Bad follow-through after strong trend bars. 
or trending lengths up or down. Okay, so you're gonna have to look for um, signs. Bull, bulls buying, bear closes, scaling in lower um, and and scalping, weak channel um, down or up. So just like here. Okay, so bear, it's coming down. It's a bear leg. It's strong. There's a wedge here. We have a strong bear uh, body here, but it's exhausting. So it's signaling you that it's going to reverse. Okay, so bad follow through after climax bars or exhaustion gaps rather than measuring gaps. Opposite side will try to close that gap we talked about. Probably a leg in a trading range. So we might actually go back and test the prior high. Uh, if I see a leg, take a look at this chart. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys. Um, a trick here. So you got the first leg coming down and you got the second leg with that exhaustion bar. Okay. It's that big bear gap bar. And then you get the doji and then a bunch of bull bars. Take a look at where that um, consecutive bear bar started. The very first bull bar, mark that bull bar with a box. That's your resistance. When the price gets there, if you are not in a trade, put a limit order there. Look for a second entry short. Do not sell the first bear bar right next to that big bull bar to testing that prior high, that um, uh, lower high. Sell the second bear bar. That is going to get you the two-legged or three-legged swing opportunity testing the low of the trading range. That's how you're going to make money. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Limit order market. Uh, trading ranges are limit order market. That means uh, every time you see a strong bear bar, bulls are going to buy that close. You see a strong bull bar, bears are going to sell, buy the, um, sorry, uh, you see a bear bar, they're going to buy it. You see a bull bar, they're going to sell it. Okay. It's completely opposite of what, um, I, you know, logic would tell you. You see a bull bar, buy it, but you're not in a breakout market. You're in a trading range market. So what I do is I divide the trading range into three sections or two sections. I use the lower half to buy. I use the upper half to sell. Okay. Uh, just like here, take a look at the image. You have a strong bear bar. Um, there, there will be um, bulls buying that, but there is a reason why bulls buy that. Okay, so this is actually market makers or institutions. Um, this is actually bulls. Okay, so selling here. What does that mean, bulls selling here? Well, it's actually a logic applied to the markets by this smart money. They have the budget to spend and put in the market to trick the traders to sell the close of that big bear bar. This is how the new traders get trapped. They know that if they can spend that kind of um, money, they can actually make the market looking like breaking out only to reverse it. And then they make their money with the second two legs or three legs up back to the highs. Okay. So when you see an exhaustion bar and you see look left, and if there's kind of a, um, you know, um, prior love there or some kind of a support, do not sell into that, especially with those big bars. Okay. You got to scalp quickly. You cannot swing. If you're swinging, go for 10 points, maybe and go for 15. If you can get a 20 point, that's great. But most of the time, tight trading ranges will give you nine to 10 points. Broad trading ranges can give you up to 15 to 20 points. Okay, so uh, is buy low, sell high, use white stops. Let's talk about that. Um, if you don't use white stops, market will give you, trading ranges are forgiving. So they're going to give you, okay, another opportunity to sell and break even. But if you are a new trader, you should not scaling at all. You can wait to sell or buy the second time when they present you the second sell signal. Okay, so um, I'm going to go through this. Um, um, at the lower half or the lower one third of the trading range, look for second entries always and the same for the upper um, third. Um, we go through all of these examples and uh, techniques in the trade room. Um, let's see. Uh, when reversing up in a bear rally by the bull bar closing near its high, okay, scalp, take a quick profit, swing to opposite side 10 points at a time if you can get. Um, look for inside or II bars um, before reversals and expect always breakout failures. Um, I'm not going to go through this. It's the same thing, but you can see here how wide the stops are. Okay, so if you're selling, your stop is up here. Uh, it's probably not going to get um, um, actually um, tested. If you are buying, your stop should be here 
and as price goes up then you can trail underneath the higher lows higher lows and um until you scalp okay generally i do this and then i immediately move into the break even if i see a good major higher low rather than a lower high if i'm buying and the same thing if i see a good lower high after taking out one of those small um uh, prior lows okay i'm gonna move the stop from there all the way down to the lower high otherwise i'm gonna keep it up there because if price reverses i can still sell and break even um, and most of the time trading ranges will give you that opportunity okay so is what uh trading ranges where when you buy at low so where do you take profit right so where does the seller sit um generally i look at the chart uh, before the market start immediately find my um, resistance support by looking at the prior day by looking at the uh you know measured moves if i see a strong bull leg okay so i generally measure that right away find my uh, projected target up and if i want to sell i don't place a sell order until market gets to that second leg completion okay so once the projected target is met then i start to look to sell i look for bad signal bars i look for bars with upper wicks mile long upper wicks okay then i look for a sell signal bar preferably a second entry short if i'm going to buy it's the other way around i always measure for that uh measured move target i use the trend lines also uh, as uh, resistance support, uh, because think of it this way, even the news bars respect support and resistance. Okay, so in a news, even during FOMC, if there's any kind of um, trading range, the first thing that we do before the FOMC, we actually find our support and resistance, okay? And then we wait for the news bar, even though it is strong, to tag that resistance and then that's where we actually put a sell order because it's going to respect so it's the same thing you can use the trend lines you can use the measured moves you can use the legs uh, before even uh, you know deciding to sell and thinking that is the high of your um, trading range okay so breakouts from uh, trading ranges eventually a market will break out and all trading ranges break out into trends 50 percent chance um, actually that is misspelled sorry about that chance of bull or bear breakout once once becomes trend um, stop trading it like um, trading range trade it like it's a breakout market okay buy the close sell um, buy the close or sell the close trend market okay so I look for generally uh, before the breakout um, head and shoulders patterns uh, double bottom higher low or double top lower high major trend tr trend reversal setups like the one that you're seeing in the images and even the breakouts will come to an end so take a look at the bottom um actually chart you have a trading range right there we're going sideways just about 12 maybe 20 bars but finally we break out and you get a really nice small pullback bull trend there's actually a measured move target there if you project it to upside you can anticipate bears waiting there finally and then i look for wedge patterns wedge patterns meaning trend lines once the trend line is tagged for the third time i'm going to look to sell i'm looking for second entries right there i'm looking for bad signal bars i'm looking for second entries and then i'm going to reverse it back to the center either the high or the center of that original trading range that market broke out that is the magnet that is the balance zone that it's going to want to reverse sometimes it doesn't on the top version it didn't but the bottom version it did here we go let's talk about the daily chart okay so i'm back to the trading range days i'm going to go back to the um, encyclopedia files um, and i'm going to go through each and every one of those trading range days let's talk about the daily chart many people don't know how to use the daily bars which is actually very important because the way that the daily bar is forming uh, and the the bars before the prior days can actually tell you a lot about uh what the current day can do okay so you should always start analyzing your day starting with the daily chart so if you take a look at this uh when the daily um chart is in a trading range such as right here take a look and 
uh, five minute chart will also be in a trading range. Okay, so for, for example, if the bar is um, a doji or it's got an upper wick or a lower wick, so that means day is a trading range day. So um, on these days, okay, uh, generally say we have we get a doji and that means that trading range day can test the open of the day um, at the end of the day so if you take a look at right here okay so you have the day open here and then it kind of um, trended up but you can see the first one two three six seven bars maybe eight bars in a small trading range and you can see that big bull bar follow through fail to go further and then we get a really nice sell signal bar right there and when the market comes right back down to these open or the um, bar ones low okay so you tend to look for is it going to close below the bar uh, bar one low or is it going to reverse since it's a trading range right it's a small up small down right it's confusion so it's going to probably go sideways before it decides the, the next course and at the open generally i draw a line to the low of that first bar okay so um at the low and i look for bear bars closing below it if i want to go continue going down maybe get a measured move maybe we're going to get a wedge pattern whatever and if we do not get that i tend to look for reversal at that prior low probably buyers are already waiting okay so they buy and you can see the confusion right here you're getting three bull bear bars one of them the one in the middle it has actually a bear body okay so take a look at that and we are going to probably close that bear by bear gap because we're now reversing from the low so the limit order buyers enter here with a white stop down here they're targeting the top of the trading range there were some initial sellers there but um it, this this is this is now a leg one with some gap bull gaps most likely to get a second leg up therefore you're going to get some kind of a measured move to the upside so if you are a bear and you sold here blindly without knowing how trading ranges work what to look for even if they're small like this you sold right here and you're trapped so you're not going to sell uh, okay while these bull bars are progressing you might end up selling here but you have to also look at the price action okay we did not go beyond um, below the bar one so therefore market is reversing it's looking for a breakout and we have a strong bull leg chances are it's going to get a second leg up so selling here will only going to uh, um, actually make your pnl even more red so maybe it's best to actually project a measured move to the upside your stop here entry here and a projected measured move to the upside and you wait for bulls to reach that target and then you start to sell you can actually put a limit order there so what you're going to do now is if you are stuck down here you're is looking for a break even and market comes down you can see right here but you also have to look left okay so where can it go and reverse back well i generally look at these breakout points chances are we're going to come to that breakout point if we breach below the breakout point that is telling you that the stock bears down here are looking for a break even and perhaps they're wanting to push the market all the way down to their original entry price that they sold blindly and got stuck when a um, breakout test think about this bar right here that upper wick draw a line if that breakout test if the bear bars are closing below okay and the bull bars are not showing up that means we're not going to go higher we're going to come back down so you break even there right so and then you make money with the second contract you sold um as it comes all the way down now this one actually did not come all the way down to the entry okay so but maybe they sold this bar even then market is giving you an opportunity to exit out you already broke even you just need to take the uh, money that you made with the second contract now we're coming in here because there's a tight trading range right so um and we're 
we're kind of saying we're coming back to the origin of um, the open of the day price so that's becoming an important price now okay so even though market keeps going up or reverses somewhere at the heart or the middle of this trading range which is where the balance zone is okay so you're gonna actually target the high of this trading range probably sellers are waiting there okay so but expect no continuation and a reversal back down market is already signaling you that it had a successful reversal back to that open of the um, day most likely it will come right back to it so you have a wedge here one two three right so and market reverses back it's a small pullback bull trend but um it's going to have 25 percent of the time it's going to fail right so and to become a uh, bullish trend it's but the 75 percent of the time it's going to reverse right back down here so is if you put a sell order limit order right at that high this bar goes above but chances are there are sellers waiting and they're going to sell i don't sell blindly with a limit order waiting there i look to see what the market will do at that high okay so i wait for first sell signal that's great now i'm looking for a second sell signal in the meantime i'm looking for a wedge pattern one two three this one up maybe one two and three or is maybe one two and three and a double top it's kind of a higher high but then i'm seeing a double top neckline perfect underneath this neckline this little doji when i see this double top pattern with a neckline i can put a sell stop order right there i can put a limit order right there i can sell the close of the strong second entry bear bar so i can enter with a market order i can enter with a limit order i can enter with a stop order trading range um, days you can use um, all three of those order types and i am swinging down now is first time i'm going to be taking profit is somewhere here you see this congestion zone right here in that congestion zone is i'm going to scalp because my stop is right up here it's a white stop but market made a lower high right there so market is signaling me take your profits in this congestion zone this tight trading range because market paused there before going back up you can scalp a little bit then i can move that stop above this okay if the price is coming down further it's targeting there's some kind of a magnet here that i'm interested in okay so, so where's that well maybe there are bears sold this bar okay stuck again and what are they going to do they're definitely not going to sell against a strong bull trend they're going to wait maybe first leg well first leg second leg a third leg right or a breakout there is a measured move here is your entry here is your stop or you can measure this leg project to the upside bears are not going to show up until that measured move is met and then they're going to sell there's a measured move here, right? So you can hold on to your shorts, um, your stop here, maybe your entry here, and project the target all the way down. But what I'm interested in, this. Take a look at this uh, strong bull uh, leg up, right? It started right here. If I'm targeting um, the bottom of this trading range, I still have to know where the buyers are waiting, right? The way that I find it is that when I see a consecutive bull bars, more than three, not two, more than three, I have one, two, three, four of them here. All are strongly closed mid or on their upper one thirds. So that means I'm looking for a qualifying bar to find my support. And that is that bar, bear bar. I'm going to mark from the top to the bottom and I'm going to project it to the right. And when the market gets there, I'm going to take profit. Okay. So uh most likely it's coming down to the open of the day and it closes right there so this day is actually a doji on the daily chart right so it's confusion day uh market um opened um and closed at the same level all right so let's go to the next one how to avoid losses so i want to go um about that a little bit so trading ranges are very forgiving 
if you're stuck in a position, if you know how to trade it, um, you can wait for two legs, three legs, and then sell a strong uh, maybe bear bar. So let's talk about this a little bit here. Although the um, chart is a little bit fuzzy, but I'm going to try to do my best here. So market is up, but you can see is when it started, it was sideways, made a little wedge there. At the open, we look for little wedges, right? Three pushes or double tops, but bears are not able to swing. So this is a prior low. At that prior low, probably buyers are waiting. Bears are not able to get below that prior low. So um, think about, maybe think of this as a one minute chart or think of this as a chart with multiple days, maybe the whole week, doesn't matter. Um, price action is fractal. You can apply everything that you learn in the Brooks price action course to any time frame, any layout, okay? Multiple days or uh, even week, weekly charts. So trading range lows, buyers are right there. They bought it. Um, you can actually literally buy above that is um, pin bar. It's a bear bar, but you can buy above it. That was the first entry long. That's basically the second entry long. Or wait for a confirmation bar, a bull bar like this, and then buy above it, buy the close. Since that bar did not go above that neckline, double bottom neckline, it's trying to target here. Okay, so since it did not go above it, maybe put a buy stop order because if the market is not ready to go higher, your stop order may not be hit. Even if it comes down, you won't be triggered into a losing position. Okay, so but if the bar were to able to take out this lower high, I would have said these bulls are running a bunch of stops here that these bears lowered from this level to that level because they were looking for a bear breakout and they completely failed. Now they're trapped and they might be exiting out of the market because they know most likely these bulls, when they close a bar like this, they're gonna take out those stops and they're gonna get the one to one, two to one, three to one, maybe four to one, I don't know. But it's right there, market is signaling you there is a one to one, maybe a measured move as this bull bar body takes out that um, uh, prior high, that means you have a measured move. So anyone stuck here selling will not sell any of these bull bars, even if they sell here. Okay. So they're going to sell when the measured move target is complete, then they're going to look for a qualifying first sell signal bar. Sometimes you get these strong, uh, sell signal bars. Okay. And they're the first entry short. But then you're uh, running into this really tight bull channel. I sometimes hesitate selling those bars because, well, they're not the, they're not the second entry. They're not the high probability, right? So I'm probably going to get stuck. But when I see the um, size of the bull bar and the size of the bear bar are equal and the bear body is strongly closing, chances are that's going to um, continue down a little bit. Okay. so. And it does. It gets a second. What if you didn't sell here and then you get this bar? Uh, what do you do? Well, uh, if you sell right here, your risk reward is a little bit, um, it's not It's not that good. Because if you sell underneath here, your stop is right up there. You know it's going to come down. But now you're selling here. You're wondering, am I going to get a strong second leg down? Am I going to be able to come down all the way to here and break even? Well, uh, it's a leg like this probably needs a second leg down. So um, chances are market is going to want to either come to this high or it's going to target this most congested on the center of this trading range. Okay. So it's, it's the high of the trading range, low of the trading range and the center. And look where it came down. It came down, it went up and then it, it started to come down again. So it gave you an opportunity to um, sell with a limit order, maybe even sell here and then continue to come down. If you sold here, you would break even. And then if it continues to go down, you can leave a runner. Some people just break even, they're happy to break even, exit out. And because they're worried about this leg, uh, but some people will have a break even and then they will have a runner, maybe a small position, and they're gonna target exactly where they um, sold 
so that they can maximize their earnings. Now, is trading range continues right here, right? So um, if you want to buy, again, I'm looking for three legs, uh, maybe leg one, leg two, maybe leg three, or leg one, leg two, leg three. So I know that this is a trading range, so I can treat it as trading range rather than looking for a um, breakout. So I'm putting a uh, buy order here. Uh, if you don't want to buy blindly, then look for a buy signal one bar. So there's one right there you can buy. And then expect a one-to-one -one and two-to-one target. Now, you have a strong leg down. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a doji with a small bare body and an upper wick strong. Okay, so that is a pause between these two legs. So leg one, pause, leg two. When the market is going up, first it's going to want to close the first gap or exhaustion bar gap. Okay, so and it's going to go against that. And the next, it's going to come to that pause area, and many of these bulls will sculpt there. And if there's another gap, most likely the second leg will try to get to that. Okay, so right around here, if there's any bull bar before these consecutive bear bars with two legs coming down, I have an evidence area, which is the range of that bull bar at the top now is my resistance. I know I can hold it. I can put my stop here. I can now swing into that and take profit right there. If there's any wedge top, one, two, and three, or one, undershoot, and overshoot, three, so I have a wedge top, I can now sell and trade the other way around. This is why these trading ranges are very lucrative. You can uh, you can trade both sides, but you have to understand and see the evidence first and, um, and mark those resistance and support levels. Even in tight trading ranges, uh, you will be able to buy into those or sell from those, okay? So let's go to the next one. Oh, that's too much. Here we go. Uh, so trading range days, tight trading ranges. Okay, so tight trading ranges, people find it very difficult to trade. Uh, Al Brooks has a great, actually, method to trade these days. Now, I didn't, I didn't see anything or any mention of this method in the course. Uh, maybe there is one, but I've learned it within the trading, um, trading room. Uh, as I watched Al for years, how he actually uh, reads a tight trading range and what he looks for. Now, in this chart, in this chart, you're not really seeing two important components. Okay, so two important indicators, which is a 20 EMA and one hour EMA. So I'm going to show you guys something. When you have a tight trading range, treat it like any other trading range, but uh, you're going to be buying and selling with limit orders. Now you can also use stop orders, but it's the limit orders because it's such a tight area that generally uh, bear machines will immediately want to sell a strong bull close. Okay, I can't seem to get my mouse work there. Here we go. So let me close this application. I think it's interfering. Here we go, that's better. Okay, so in tight trading ranges, is I immediately look at things as this is a limit order market. It is not a stop order market. So I restrain myself from selling underneath bars or buying above um, bull bars, okay? So what I do is uh, I do completely the opposite. If I see a bull bar, it's testing some kind of high. I know we're in a trading range. Bear machines look at it. This is great. We're about to trap these bulls looking for a breakout. Let's sell that strong close or sell above it, right? So trading range, a bull bar, that's basically designed uh, that, um, to trap the bulls wanting to buy it. If you bought this bar or one tick above, you are trapped. And this is going to happen so fast right here that uh, you're not even going to be able to find time to analyze it. So instead of buying, actually sell it. Maybe sell at the high with a limit order. Sell the close of it. Or if you didn't do any of that, sell underneath that doji. Put a sell order, sell stop order. That's how you enter. 
you're doing the opposite. You're betting against the bulls at the high of a tight trading range and you'll make money. Expect two legs, leg one, pull back, leg two at the lows, bad signal bars, right? So you're not going to look to sell. You're going to look to buy. There's a limit order. Uh, bulls are entering here. They trap the bears with the second leg and close the bull bar. I can buy that bar or I can buy the close of that bear bar I, or I can buy the close of this bear bar. Even if it goes a little bit lower at this point, I don't know how much, how many points from this low to that low, but um, chances are about two points. Uh, please write this down. Two points, five points, 10 points, buyers are stacking their buy orders and they're going to buy and they're going to look for a reversal and they will make money as the market reverses back into the trading range. Okay. So, but is two things I want to talk about this because this is an image and um, let me see if I can um, show you an actual chart. Do you guys see this? Nope, you can't. All right. So let me. Let me see if I can actually share uh, because I want to go back to the encyclopedia and show you guys. Let me see. Nope. Apparently drag and drop doesn't work here. Uh, okay. Hold on. Nope. Share screen. Hmm. Okay. So let's do that. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the trading range. Okay, so in the encyclopedia, everything is in alphabetical order, right? So let's take a look at the TRD, uh, right? It's the part 15 trading range right there. So I am looking for a, actually, hold on. You can, you can search in many different ways. I make life easy for myself. I don't have an Excel spreadsheet, uh, which is something I think it's very cool. I got to learn how Tim um, um, Fairweather is using that. Um, basically, I browse through in the easiest way or a very basic way possible. As I study the encyclopedia slides every day, I literally um, study them. I go in there in my spare time. I go through section by section, get myself familiar, um, you know, familiar with all of these sections and charts in them. So is this section has about 18 subsections or modules, right? Trading range day, trading range day with late bull breakout, um, trading range day. Let me see. Here we go. Uh, leg in a trading range. Trading range day with late bear breakout. Trading range day failed late bear breakout. Bear leg in trading range day. Um, trading range with midday breakout down or midday breakout up. So it goes uh, in the mid during the midday. It actually breaks out to the upside. So all those charts are there. I'm going to go through them, but I'm looking for a small trading range. So let's find it. That's it. Trading range small day, right? Or small day, then breakout and uh, measure mode. So I'm going to go to that and I'm going to click on this. So what do we have here? What we have here is a 20 EMA, okay? Which is very important. That's one of the uh, indicators. The other indicator that Al uses on his charts is the one hour EMA, which is the 20 bar EMA from the one hour chart. Okay. So generally these tight trading ranges, which you're going to get, those two indicators are um, parallel to one another. Okay. So when you get a day like this, what I do is when a bull bar or a couple of bull bars actually gap up from the 20 EMA, I try to sell the most, the strongest bull bar at the close. I do not look for continuation. And when the bars are gapping down the bear bars and separating from the EMA on the five minute chart, 
somewhere towards the um, prior lows, I'm going to look for a strong bear bar and I'm going to buy that close and I'm going to reverse it. I will scalp right at the EMA. If it goes beyond it and wanting to close these gaps, which it did, look, the gap here closed. And there is a gap right here. If you actually, there are th three bull bars. If you put a line from the bottom of that bull bar, why? You have consecutive one, two, three, four, and a second leg down. So the evidence says the first bull bar, if there are two more, okay, so you can literally um, draw your resistance box right there and wait for market to get there with one leg, two leg, maybe third leg. And then you're going to look for a good bull close and you're going to sell. Now, you're not going to get anything this tight, okay? So regular, you know, the trading range is going to be tight, but it's not going to be this small. So you're going to get a lot more definition. Um, so he um, here's another one. But this one's not a tight trading range the way that I explained because this is not really parallel, uh, in my opinion. Say there's um, 20 EMA, right? Uh, one hour EMA right here. This one's actually uh, climbing up. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to sell a strong bull bar I see. Instead, I'm going to look for a wedge top, maybe sell from that trend line, or I'm going to look for a micro double top, and I'm going to look for a neckline and a strong bear close, and I'm going to sell the second entry instead. Okay, so let's take a look at here. So this is a little bit better, but still, it's not a tight trading range in my opinion, but it is um, in this example. So you can see market is coming down and, uh, well, it's coming down, but you can see the bar is actually um, a doji. It's not a continuation bear close. Right there, second bar, bar two is signaling you that even though this is coming down, probably there's a small measured move to the downside. This is pro this move is probably going to end. So when you see something like this at the open and you can um, go to the trading ranges, either start with the trading range, the first module, you can get examples there as well. Or if the trading range is tight, then uh, open up this module and start looking at the um, setups because you most likely you will see this exact same setup on your current live chart but look at this so open uh, at the open we have a bear move down right so first bar second bar maybe this is the first bar i think that's the first bar so you have two bear bars but they're overlapping even though the bars are overlapping this is still a bear close and it's a strong bear close now how i treat this uh, i might look for a continuation or I can put a sell stop order underneath that. But I see this bar, now I'm anxious to take profit. I'm probably gonna scalp, not necessarily a look to look for continuation. But market comes down, that is not a bull bar. It comes down another bear bar, okay, fine. Then I get an inside bar. So I'm not happy because now what I suspected as a trading uh, range, it's actually unfolding in front of me. So it market is unsure that it's going to have a strong bear breakout from the open. Chances are buyers are waiting at the EMA because it's a key price. Think of this as a um, trend line. Or if the market is already making a wedge, one, pull back, two, pull back, three, and a bad follow through bull bar, that is the first entry long. Is you can either buy above it or is you can look for a second entry, right? So first entry, pull back, second entry. Expect this gap to be closed. However, probably this leg is too big and then the second leg, right? Probably sellers are waiting there. There's a lower high here uh, and there probably stops above and the bears are going to defend that stop. So they're not gonna allow bulls to continue go higher and then you get what you look, what you do is even though it's a tight trading range, you can see that first leg pull back, second leg pull back, and the third leg right there. You can actually take profit, and you're looking for now a bad signal bar. Well, it's it's not going up. You got a micro double top, probably neckline. Ooh, bear bar. That's good. I can actually put a sell stop order right underneath that, or I can sell the close of it. Stop a little bit above. 
right? You do not want to put your stop here because it could go right up there and take your stop before coming down. So you want a white stop. And it comes down, maybe at the EMA, you scalp a little bit, and then you can lower that stop above maybe that bear bar, since there's a bull bar here. That means this bear leg is looking for a second leg. This is a pullback. As soon as this low is taking out, take that stop and put it right above it. And then by the time we test the prior low, you're going to take profits before this actually reverses and comes and gets your stop above the spare bar. Because you know that this is a trading range, right? Bad follow through. Bulls are making three push up or is maybe like one, leg like two. I don't care. It's, all I know is that we're able to reverse. So chances are they are sellers, I'm sorry, buyers waiting here. Anybody who bought here or maybe bought above this bar, okay, is already disappointed. So what do you think they're going to do, right? They're going to they're gonna minimize their um, stops. So they're looking to buy right there. So you see something like this, even though it's a bear flag and a failed bear flag, it's a failed bear flag with double bottom, and the market is going to get a small pullback bull trying to test the highs. You see something like this maybe after the first hour, the second hour, right? You're going to go in here because by the time you go through this couple of times, you'll memorize it. You'll know exactly where this um, slide is so that you can actually trade exactly what you see here on your live, live slide. Okay. So let's go through some of these. So here's one, right? Um, you got um, maybe bar one. We moved underneath that, but no breakout going back in, right? There's a wedge here, but even though there's a wedge, there's actually a trading range here, right? So you're going to get these messy opens. But the one thing that is happening here is that market did not go above, okay? Did not really close um, all the way up until maybe one, six bars, seven bars, okay? Above bar one with a bull bar. It took out the bar one slow. It's still bearish. So uh, many bears are stuck here. Market goes up. And at the high, those bears will sell. They're going to look for maybe an inside bar, a bar that closes on its low. They're going to sell the close. They're going to sell one tick underneath. And they're going to try to break even and eventually get back to where they got stuck. Okay, so this is going to go on and on and on like this until it breaks out. It's a tight trading range, but um, you can get a larger version. Trades exactly like this with an end of day breakout and then closes at the EMA. So, uh, so, so to conclude the tight trading ranges, uh, use the one hour EMA, use the 20 EMA, and when they are parallel to one another, okay, so sell above the EMA, any strong bull bar close, and then take profits back to the EMA because it's gapping up, and then leave a runner to see if it can actually gap down below the EMA until it breaks out. It finally squeezes out of that trading range. It could be a tr uh, triangle. Uh, so let's see if there's any triangle here. There's a triangle right there, right there. They are selling well. Uh, they sold at the EMA, one, two, and three push top. Okay, so, or um, uh, there's a small wedge right there, one, two, and three, right? So here's your sell signal bar, sell underneath that, sell the close. Look for a two-legged move down to the bottom of the trading range. Take profit. And then here is your first entry. Here is your second entry. And the market goes again two legs, right? So there's a gap here. Bulls are going to close that gap. Mark those gaps. We will close these gaps. But really, this is the doji. The doji is where the market is going to go and test before selling again. It's in a trading uh, triangle. Triangles are trading ranges. Uh, expanding triangles, regular triangles, they're all trading ranges with higher lows, lower highs. And finally, market is going sideways. It's going to break out. Now, if, if we're no longer uh, trading underneath the EMA, right? So we're probably going to go higher, test the high, and break out from above the high. That's how I know if we're making higher lows, this low is actually the same level with that one, that one. But there's a higher low here into bull bar. Now we're closing bull bars. We're becoming always in long, right? So it's, I'm looking for a skew, uh, um, squeeze and I'm looking for this high to be tested. And 
but at the end of the day, we're going to um, get back to the EMA. So I don't want to spend much time on the tight trading ranges. I want to go to the trading range. So there's one way to look, right? So you can just browse through it. This is the way I do, right? So you have a strong, not very strong, but small pullback bull trend. There's actually a wedge there, one up, down, two, maybe, um, or one pullback, two pullback, three with a double top, and then we come down. The pullback is actually pretty strong. It took out just about 50% of this bull leg up. So you're going to get these, and that means bulls are not able to keep more than 20 bars um, above the EMA gapping. When you don't get 20 bars or up to 20 bars, sometimes it's a lot more than 20 bars gapping to the EMA, we're not in that strong bull trend. And you can see the bull trend, the bull bars kind of fizzling here, even though the bulls are buying because first two bars, how do you decide market is trending? First two bars of bull closes and there are decent bull closes, you can buy. First two bars are decent bear closes, you can sell, right? So we have two, but there most of the bars are overlapping. That two bars, even though the bull closes, signaling you something is already bad here. It's not that good. And then you get these upper wicks and then you get this strong bear bar. It's not a bear doji. It is a strong bear bar. That right there is signaling you some kind of a maybe trading range starting point. Then I'm counting wedge top, maybe one, two, three pushes. Then I get this. Okay, that's my first entry short. And we go back up and then come back down. That's definitely double top neckline below that bull bar. Nobody likes to sell below a bull bar. But when you get a double top like that, you can put a sell stop order underneath that. You got this bear bar, trail that sell stop order right underneath that bear bar. You can enter the market with a stop order, or you can simply sell the close of that bar. When you do that, you're going to look for two legs down. Leg one, pull back that bar's doji. It's going above the prior bar's high. So that means it's a pause and it goes up and it's the starting point of the second leg down. But what I'm looking for is look left. Where was that congestion after these leg? this leg? Market stalled here a little bit. The size of the bull bodies, the inside bar. So it's telling me that area is a congestion zone. Okay, so market is going to come down there and uh, probably buyers are waiting there. But you don't need to look here because you got the two legs and most likely at the um, key price level, which is EMA, buyers are waiting. These bears are going to take profit. Now we're going to go right back up because we have now a trading range, right? So the evidence says either at the top, sellers are waiting, or if I have consecutive bear bars with two legs going down, even if the bulls have a strong leg up, chances are the range, the size from the high to the low of this bull bar, if I draw a resistance box right there, I can put a limit sell right here. Or I can wait for a bear bar close and I can sell that. Chances are I'm going to get a swing. Now, we have a trading range here. Market is coming down. We have a double top, a slanted double top with a neckline. Market wants to test that neckline. Probably sellers underneath that neckline. Those sell orders activate. That's why you end up getting this leg down. Now, remember, small or big. In any trading ranges, when you see is a second leg, this is a first leg. Well, there was a first leg and a second leg, but in a bigger scheme of things, this is your first leg, and this right here is your second leg. When the second leg is a lot more stronger than the first leg, and last couple of bear bars are gapping down, accelerating down, they're trying to get to somewhere, which is the prior low. That means you're about to get trapped if you're expecting some kind of a breakout. This is what the big money, okay, is. This is actually bulls selling. Bulls only sell if they have money to throw in the market to trap others, right? Um, institutions, they trade against each other. They don't care about you and me, okay? So my money or your money, it's invisible. It means nothing to them. Bank America tries to... Uh, 
trade with uh, Chase or, uh, you know, how do I say this? They try to trap each other, big banks, big institutions, uh, because they have the budget. They know um, many of the, uh, you know, bears are waiting here, maybe a sell stop orders. They're looking for a measured move to the downside. Their goal is to trap those big institutions and grab their money. The only problem with this leg, it is way too strong. And when you have these big void areas, okay, big space, sometimes I hear L talks about these spaces in his uh, trading uh, room sessions. Um, I, call it, I call them void. That kind of gives me, when I have these big spaces, that kind of gives me opportunity to enter with stop orders. If there's not much of a void, that means bars are sideways, then I only use the limit order and I bet against big bull bars and sell them. I bet against big bear bar closes and I buy them. But here I have really strong, big gap, gapping holes here. That means is it's not necessarily tight trading range, and it could give me, it could allow me to sell with stop orders and expect a continuation down. But if I sold this, I have to be also uh, aware of buyers waiting here, maybe two point underneath, three, five, or 10 point underneath, they're waiting and they wanna um, reverse the market. So they try to trap those traders right here, it went up. The only problem with this leg is too strong. A is strong bear channel, the first pullback is always minor. But look what's happening here. We moved below the open of the day. So we breached that and we actually traded underneath with a bear flag. This is a bear flag. This is spike pullback and channel. Remember the market cycle. Market cycle says um, we are, the, the trend will always go into some kind of a channel, right? And, and then it's gonna morph into a trading range, right? So here's a um, spike, here's your channel, right? So one, two, three, or one, two, three. So, and it's a wedge, it goes sideways. There it is, before either, either breaking down or breaking up, right? So if, if you are a bull, you are stuck up here. What are you gonna do? You're gonna wait for market to come down and then you're gonna look to buy maybe at there, or you're gonna scale in maybe two, five, or 10 points below. You're gonna scale in, you're gonna look for a second entry. Look, wedge, maybe it's truncated, I don't know, but it's, it is a wedge, it's a double bottom, right? So there's a good sell, second buy signal, maybe first entry, maybe second entry, or first entry, second entry. Now I'm going, I'm looking for minimum two legs up or all the way up to the, um, this is a lower high. So we know there are stops there. I'm looking for price to get above it, right? So that's what I'm looking for. But I have to also pay attention to this open of the day. Market has spent some time there. So it's becoming a key price. Market goes there. These bulls are taking profit because there are limit order sellers waiting. But who's gonna sell against one, two, three, four, five, six bull bars? It's a tight bull leg, probably looking for a pullback and a second leg. Now, what am I targeting here? I'm targeting big gaps. Most likely these bulls with a small pullback bull trend, it's, it's want to close some of these gaps at least. So it's, I'm targeting this bar underneath this bar. I'm targeting maybe this gap. This gap is closed. Now I'm targeting this gap. There is a bull bar, there's a bull bar, there's a bull bar. So somewhere around here, I can put a line and wait for price to get there. If it makes a three push wedge top, I can I can say, well, it's, they're gonna sell because they might be seeing a bear flag. But all I know is that there's a wedge here and these bears are gonna take profit. And then we come back to the open of the day because open of the day already proven to be a key price level, we go sideways and we close at the EMA and closer to the open of the day. Trading ranges always use open of the day, tick price as magnet. Even if it actually is strong with large, broader channel, uh, as long as they're go it's going sideways, it's probably gonna come back and try to close near the, EM, uh, near the um, open of the day, just like this. Okay, so this is a little bit better, right? So um, even though it's tight trading range, you can see it's a mess. You have no business being in here. But what can you do if you really want to trade this? What is the best way to do it? Look for a strong 
bear bar, right? Buy that close. Look for a strong bull bar. Sell the close. They sold this one. This isn't what I would sell, although this is looking for a second leg, but I'm, I won't sell this. I would look for a bull close closing towards the top of this range, which is right here. Well, this one looks very um, promising. I'm not going to buy that. I'm definitely going to close it. Why? Because I'm looking for a double top. First six bars, okay, um, generally, let me see. Uh, so bar seven is 10 o'clock in the morning. We always get some kind of news, okay? Generally, 10 o'clock, market S&P or any market could print double tops and double bottoms, okay? So this is the market cycle I follow. Even if there is a really messy trading range, at 10 o'clock, please write this down, 10 o'clock, I'm always looking for some kind of a double top or double bottom and some kind of a swing, okay? So if you count one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and double top, right? So I'm selling that close because it's a limit order market. It's probably going to come down and it's going to test the low. It's going to test the EMA. And you can either sell the close or here's a nice inside bear bar. Uh, sell the close of that bar. Sell underneath that bar. Look for two legs down. Leg one, maybe. Or because there's a gap here, I kind of take that as possibly uh, leg two. Okay, so in a smaller time frame, it's a bunch of bars. Maybe there is a pause there. Or you can say is, this is leg one and maybe this is leg two but trap and the bulls took over. Now, this is a trading range. It's getting a little bit of a uh, breakout, but the follow through is really bad. And you got an inside bar right there. So uh, there were buyers here, bought here, disappointed, probably scaling in two points below, three or five points below. And then they're looking for two legs up, okay? So gap here, bulls close the gap. But look what's happening. We're oscillating around the EMA, and the EMA is pretty flat. So this is like that small, tight trading range that I talked about. Okay, so this is basically is the same thing. I'm looking, I'm targeting strong bull bars. It's a flat EMA. I don't even care if there's actually a one-hour EMA. I'm going to sell that close. Ooh, bull bear bar. I'm going to buy that close. Look, bear bar. I can buy the close and look for a reversal. It went, it came down a little bit because there's a, a prior low, but look what it did. Eventually it just went up. So if I actually bought here, bought the close, I'm making money as this goes up, right? So, oh, look, strong bull bar also at the high. I can sell it even though it goes against me a little bit, but look, it comes down and it makes leg one, leg two, leg three. I mean, and then double bottom, higher low, right? So it's a trend reversal, even in a tight trading range like this, right? At the low, I have three legs, leg one, leg two, leg three. So it's telling me I'm still in a trading range. This might actually go up and probably sellers are waiting there, right? That's the key thing. If you see sideways market with three legs, when the price gets up here, I'm still going to sell. Oh, look, bull bar, I'm selling that. So until we get some kind of a breakout, I'm going to keep repeating the same thing until I no longer can. Because chances are I make enough money doing the same thing. And if I actually get trapped somehow, maybe I bought this and it didn't go um, my way and I got trapped here. I already made five times selling at the high, buying at the low with the strong bear closes. This loss is not going to hurt me. Okay. So think about that. In fact, if you actually bought this and you see that there's a small bear flag and gets an extension and sells, I can put a buy order, limit order, right at this low and, oops, sorry, and wait for wedge bottom and then buy. And if I buy it, as this goes up, my loss is going to be diminished. Why? Because I bought here. I bought again here. My midpoint is my break even. This bar is giving me break even. And it's even getting me to my original entry, right? And now I'm making money with my second entry right here. I bought again. I'm actually now in green. So my loss is offset. I even made more money. So trading ranges are actually very easy to trade, right? So let's go through.
a little bit more. Again, very messy morning, big up, big down, confusion. So expect sideways rather than selling, look to buy. Underneath the EMA, if you're seeing a gap bear bar, gapping down, testing a prior low, okay, chances are buyers are waiting and you can even buy above this. And even if it pulls back, you can buy again and it goes up with the second leg, you're making money. As you get to the highs, remember around 10 o'clock, you're looking for a double top or double bottom. And that means you're still in a trading range. Around 11.30, 11, 11.30, you get a nice wedge bottom or wedge top and a swing, maybe a, a major trend reversal. Around 1.30, midday, uh, with bar 48 and 50, you get another swing. Okay, so I'm gonna go through that as well. But anyway, I know I'm keeping you guys way too long here and it's already almost 7.30, so I'm gonna wrap this up. So I go through like this, but let me show you uh, another way of searching. So is trading range, lots of limit orders, right? So trading range, here is a um, trending bull leg, but it's probably, uh, it's a bull leg. If you look left, maybe we're in another day's range, prior day's range, right? And this ends up being a bull lag. And then we come down, right? And pull back to the 50%, gives us a neckline. Now we're testing the highs and that neckline is the target. It's mag uh, magnet, mark comes down. We are in a trading range for, I don't know, maybe 50 bars here. Even if we get some kind of a trend, chances are is it's going to stop at the highs and it's not gonna get a big breakout, okay? So it's uh, more on this, but um, so I go through like the train range with failed late bull um, breakouts. Here we go. You got a bull breakout. You're getting a measured move target and that's all there is to it. Sellers are waiting at the trend line or the measured move target looking to sell and a spike channel. What is it going to do? The rule says market cycle. It's probably going to morph into a trading range and then you can look for it up or down breakout, right? This one reverses right back to the congestion zone. If you actually mark the heart of this trading range, that's where it's gonna come down. As it gets closer, you end up getting these big wicks because bears are not stupid. They know this was a balance zone, market was happy there and then broke out and broke out with consecutive bull bars and couple of legs. Evidence says this first the, or the last bear bar, before the breakout, okay, consecutive bull bars, the re the height and the um the entire height of that bar is actually support. So they take profit there. Some bulls will join there, but you got another low here. Uh, we might actually exceed down because this is a tight trading range. I'm sorry, a tight bear channel. Chances are any pullback is minor. Expect a little bit more drift to these lows to that low. Limit order buyers waiting there. Limit order buyers showed up. First entry, second entry, or first entry, second entry, and a higher low, trend reversal, neckline, double bottom. Now, you see a double bottom, higher low, and a neckline. Your first target is there. You can take profit there and leave a runner into some of these gaps to be closed. But really, this is what they're targeting. But when I see a big gap like this, I mark the health, the 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 range, the middle range of that gap bar. And I generally look to sell somewhere around there. This is where the bulls are gonna get exhausted and we're gonna come down. Big up, big down, sideways confusion. Um, it's probably, we're gonna be stuck in this trading range. I divide it into three sections, one, two, and three. So instead of two sections, I divide into three sections. I buy in the lower section, I sell, um, in the upper section. I take profit and scalp in the middle and expect price to come down because this is where buyers are gonna be buying, not in the middle. Okay, so, um, and you can learn all about that in the trading room that uh, we go through uh, tactics and even mark the uh, bars, targets, and all these techniques are sh um, shared within the trade room so you can actually join. Um, anyway, so, Let's see, is bull leg in trading range, trading range day with late bear breakout, trading range day with failed late uh, late bear breakout. So 
trading range with midday breakout down. It, this is my favorite. FOMC day, I do look at this because you get these tight trading ranges, which you know now how to trade them, sell against strong bull closes above the EMA, buy against strong bear closes below the EMA in that tight trading range. But if we're making lower highs and we're in this kind of a tri triangle, if the market is showing you multiple bear bodies closing below the EMA, you can sell the first pullback. Chances are that's a bear flag and you can swing it down. You can look for a measured move or two to one target. Measured move is a one to one. So two to one, uh, this is what they got. Okay, so you can get that. And at the midday, remember that midday, it's actually bar 48 or 50. Sometime around bar 48 and 50, I'm looking for that. Or if I don't get it, if I don't get any kind of swing or breakout, it could be to the upside, it could be to the downside, right? What am I looking for? I am looking for bar 60. And around bar 60, we're definitely going to get that swing, okay? So it's a tight trading range. It's going to squeeze out. Now, how do I know it's going to come down? Look, is bar one. Only once we went above it with bull bars and we were not that successful. We ended up taking the bar one low, right? And we're making bear flags. We're making bear flags. These bear flags, this is even a bear flag right here. And it's not able to take out that high. And we're getting a bunch of dojis, right? So those dojis are signaling you and a bear body. You can sell underneath that. That's a bear flag. And now that's a bear flag. That's a bear flag. Another bear flag. I generally look for in a swing, I look for three or four bear flags, right? Here's another one. It's a triangle, tight trading range. And uh, this right here, kind of a big up, but a bigger down. This is a bear flag, right? So it's in the rules and it, it failed to break out. So it goes sideways. Now, if the sideways bars, the trading range becomes, uh, it prints more than 30, 40, 50 bars, if you're looking for a, a you know, uh, bull breakout, right? So we've been actually around the EMA and not able to take out that low. Um, we may not actually break out to the upside. So the probability of 40 to 60 or 60 to 40 now becomes 50-50. So it's breaking out to the downside as good as breaking out to the upside, right? So, but to me, when I see this leg, it's kind of signaling me already from the beginning of the day, it kind of sets this tone what the breakout is going to uh, be going to. So, or from um, into what direction, I'm sorry, lack of the words, I'm, I'm running out of energy here. But you can see that bear flag, another bear flag failing, failing, but we're not making higher highs. We're making lower highs. So we're going to squeeze out of this. And this bear flag is telling me that it's time to look to sell and it's to the downside. So study these charts, okay? These charts will give you great sense of direction of what to do, what not to do. Trading range day, close of near open. We talked about that. Trading range day, open in exact middle of the day range. Trading range day, late rally up and all. So the another way that I actually uh, look for things, now that I know these, so I'm kind of accustomed to these modules, the shortcuts. So here's what I do. I do uh, two, what is this, backs, is it back, what do they call this? Anyway, um, these thingamajingi, I don't know, <laughs> I forgot what they call, but anyway, these two, and then I put TRD, right, and I'm looking for is maybe a bull leg in a um, trading range, right, so or bull leg is, what is this? um bl okay so i'm looking for is maybe a breakout right so here we go l1 here we go is trading range bull leg and breakout right so or bull breakout bull breakout and that's it so maybe i'm looking for um trading range bear breakout right so here we go You're going to get all those. Uh, these are the modules. Within those, you go through the slides. It gives you all the scenarios over the years Elbrooks put together for us.
Okay, so it's easy. Or I'm looking for maybe open of the day, right? So trading range, open doji, right? Trading range, close near open for a doji day. So here we go. It, it comes right back to the open of the day. It comes right back to the open of the day. Trading range, late rally up. So basically, um, and tests open anyway. Strong bull leg goes up. It, it's actually a bull flag, but fail to break out. Double bottom, is bull flag, fail to break out. Why? It turned into flags always, um, you know, flags do break out, but they can also um, get invalidated, right? So it turns into a head and shoulders and now a measured move to the downside, strong bear outside down bar and taking out that structural low, that neckline, that means um, look for a measured move and maybe two to one target. So we're moving underneath the open of the day, but small pullback bear trend, reaching that measured move target. So the bulls are waiting for bears to get that target and they're looking for a trend line, right? So how does that trend line form? Well, it's a wedge bottom. So one, two, three, if you connect these three uh, lows, right? Three lows, you got a trend line. The third time it tests and you get a strong bull bar, buy that. It's reversing right back up. Second entry long right above this bar right here. And then you look for maybe two legs up 10 bars or three legs at 10 bars, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 bars. Or this was a leg one, pull back, leg two. However you call it, I see a wedge there. If you train your eyes, you see the wedge. And then you look for a reversal because why? There is a breakout test area, happens to be the key price level open of the day, acting as resistance and it comes down. So you will see these days all the time. And then uh, what else? Or you can just type TRD and get used to these um, abbreviations, right? And for example, this one is with two support levels below or two resistance levels above. There you go, right? So three legs, leg one, leg two, leg three. Oh, I know I'm in a still trading range and I'm going to trade it as a trading range until it squeezes out of it, okay, somehow or breaks out of it. This is also a triangle. So I have uh, resistance one, resistance two, right? So double bottom neckline. Remember, if you buy the second entry long, you need to pay yourself here. Why? Because market evidence shows multiple consecutive bear bars. Even though the pullback is strong, it's still going to give you some kind of a second leg down. That means selling was very intense here. So when the price gets there, there are sellers waiting there and therefore it pauses. Okay, so don't expect price to get reach up here right away. This is the first, but this is the second resistance and the price is um, uh, respecting that. All because you had consecutive bear bars. Chances are something that sold before strongly will sell again when the price gets there. Okay, so same thing here. Strong sell, three bear bars. Second leg, trapped bulls, bought it. But those bulls are not stupid. They know the evidence says something that sold before so strong, that little bull bar is actually representing a strong resistance. Okay. Again, so you can go small day. What else is there? Anyway, so I'm about to finish my um, presentation. I promise. Um, I just need to share. <laughs> I just need to share back the. So give me a second. Uh, why can I not share? Oh, here we go. Okay. Just the final is okay. Here we go. Trading range days, trading the middle of the day. Okay, so here we go. You have, um, we talked about the open of the day, right? Only 10% of the days trend up or down. 90% is in transition. When you have a strong legs up or down, 
uh, if you are in some kind of a trading range, maybe prior day or the day before was in a trading range, those highs will be resistance and the market could reverse right from there. And it can come all the way down there. When it comes down, that's a big up, big down. It's going to go sideways, right? But you have a spike and a channel. It goes sideways. It could still get continuation or it could actually even reverse right back up, right? So this is actually a perfect uh, example here. And tight trading range, right? So in the midday, it actually breaks out. But you're getting a, um, two thirds of the day sideways trading, maybe in a trading range. And then at the end of the day, it's not really at the end of the day, maybe like a two hours or somewhere around bar 50 to 60, you might get some kind of a breakout. Okay. So, um, and then just finalizing uh, trading in the middle of the day. Again, uh, you got a gap up, but again, this is a trend line. Anybody who sold here, they're looking for, um, you know, a good place to sell again if they're stuck here. If you are a bear, you sold here and market gives you an opportunity to sell and you didn't take this, you're going to be sitting in this. So you have to be a very strong bear to, you know, um, hold this kind of pullback. So why don't you just exit out of your uh, losses, take the loss and go long, wait for market to make, give you a wedge and a spike and channel and go sideways in a trading range, look for head and shoulders. Even in a tight trading range like this, when I see a strong bull leg morphing into some kind of a trading range like this, I look for head and shoulders pattern. I find my midpoint and I look for lower highs and the first bear flag I see that breaching that neckline, I'm going to sell. I'm gonna sell every pullback, especially if it moves underneath the EMA, anyhow. So um, study these and you know how to search for them is in the encyclopedia. Every um, chart that I um, talk about here has a module dedicated to it in encyclopedia. Same thing, prior day's range. Uh, market can open the prior day's range. Always take the prior day's high, prior day's low. Market could trend i'm sorry um trade in a trading range okay use that uh, use that resistance or support um until it finally breaks out or it can actually trade within that range all the way to the close but you do get some kind of a bullish breakout eventually within that range only to be a leg in a trading range leg in a trading range leg in a trading range so uh, here are the shortcuts uh, i'm giving you guys you can take a screenshot and use these. How to study. Well, if you want to learn all about this and get good at trading the trading range days, you need to study the video series from the course. Um, our course is uh, right now at a discounted price, $399. It is the basic price action. Uh, you can get, uh, I think you add like another $100 and get the Forex combo. Okay, is, so basically within the basic video series 18 A, B, C, D, E, F teaches you all the, um, under the market cycle module, teaches you all the trading range um, fundamentals and tactics and strategies. And then when you start with the 47 A, B, C, D under trading uh, channels and ranges, now you get into uh, the trading range days and Al Brooks is actually showing you exactly what to do with all the tactics. And a video series 48 ABC trading the open has a great uh, couple of uh, actually um, sections about trading ranges and a following with H, um, I'm sorry, G and H under the um, different trading, different times of the day. Again, trading ranges and video series 50 A and B scalping under swing and scalp trading. Study all of these. These are going to make you a stellar um, trader. Um, these are going to give you all the tools you're looking for and the skills. Anyway, so thank you so much for joining. Uh, this is Rose, and this is the end of the webinar. Um, um, thank you for staying here, and here's how you can follow uh, me and all of us. These are our social media um, channels that you can also follow us for more videos that we post, and you can find me on Discord. Again, thank you, and I'm going to... And now, finally, Richard, you can take it away. I've got nothing more to say. We've finished. We're well over time. So thank you, Rose. And thank you, everybody, for being with us.